Hello everyone, this is Tenguru, and welcome to my new boss drawing series. I put things up for a vote in the last video between Bloodborne and Dark Souls 2 as to which series should be next, and Bloodborne came out on top. For those new to the channel, I will be drawing every boss from Bloodborne in the order that they become available in the game, and treat the drawings as a playthrough of the game, meaning our equipment changes with each drawing, but I'm only allowed to use weapons and attire available at that point in the game. 17 bosses in the main game and 5 additional bosses added in the DLC makes 22 bosses to draw. There are also an additional 20 some bosses from the Chalice Dungeons, but I probably won't be drawing all of those. The focus here will be the main game bosses and the DLC with the possibility of a couple Chalice Dungeon bosses making it in as well. Well with that out of the way, Let's get right into the first boss I will be drawing in this series, the Cleric Beast. The Cleric Beast is an enormous creature with massive horns and incredible strength. As its name suggests, it was once a cleric who served as a hunter for the Healing Church. The Healing Church of Yarnum practiced a process of healing by infusions of blood known as blood ministration. Yarnum became famous for this as blood healing was able to heal wounds and even cure diseases. This ultimately led to the Healing Church's rise to power in Yarnum. Little did the people of Yarnum know that the blood infusions that were saving lives were also transforming them. As the people of Yarnum began to change, the Healing Church began to send out hunters to combat these hideous beasts, and in some cases even take preventative measures. Many of these church hunters were clerics, and as it was, Clerics transformed into the most hideous of beasts. The bosses in Bloodborne are pretty different overall from the ones found in Dark Souls games. While Dark Souls games tend to have more armored bosses, many of the enemies in Bloodborne are more wild and hairy. Drawing the hair and fur is a little different and takes a bit getting used to in order to get the look right. For this drawing, it's important that I threw everything at it to get the hair right. Different colors, some hard lines, some of them with pressure sensitivity. The important thing here is layers. It needs to be built up over time. There really isn't a shortcut to it. It can be a little tedious, but sticking with it can get some pretty good results. You might have noticed as you fought your way through the beastly citizens of Yarnum that their transformation is usually never even. In fact, throughout the game, you'll notice that many creatures have a larger and more twisted left arm than their right. This also holds true for the Cleric Beast, whose massive left arm is favored when attacking. There have been many theories on the reasoning behind this, and I think they all have some merit. The theory that I've always favored is that their blood transfusion took place on their left arm, so that's where the transformation would begin. There's confirmation of this with the foreign set that you start with in the game, which has bandages on your left arm where your character received his blood ministration. Your left arm is also closer to your heart, so that could play a role as well. Historically, left-handedness is considered unlucky or evil in many cultures. The Latin word sinistra originally meant left, but later took on the meaning of evil. It's where we get our English word sinister from. The people of Yarnum are said to be a superstitious lot. Perhaps this is the developers making a nod to that. Some people also believe it's a reference to Manus from Dark Souls, as he too had an oversized left arm that actually looks very similar to that of the Cleric Beast. In actuality, it's probably a little bit of all of them. When fighting the boss, it will be important that you avoid the left arm, as that will be the biggest threat. Staying behind or near his right arm will neutralize a lot of the threat. Serrated and fire damage are extremely effective against this boss, so using weapons like the saw cleaver, saw spear, or the threaded cane in its transformed state will be the most effective against him. As for the fire damage, oil urns followed by molotovs will do good damage from a distance. You can also target its head for a chance at a visceral attack, or stagger it by repeatedly attacking a limb and crippling it. Don't count on that limb being crippled the whole fight though. After a certain amount of damage is dealt, the boss will get a red aura and all of its limbs will return to full functionality. Since this is our first boss, I decided to go with the foreign set for the fight. You can pick up the hunter's set before the fight, which is statistically better, 
but since a big part of the series is telling our story through the game, it seemed right to start things off with the starting gear. It also shows off the bandage on her left arm, so it seemed fitting. As for our weapon, I opted with the saw cleaver for our starting weapon. It was the weapon that I started with in my first playthrough of the game, and it's also featured on the cover art, so it seemed like a good place to start. As mentioned earlier, it does serrated damage in its base form, which is very effective on the Cleric Beast. I rounded things off with the Hunter Pistol, which I tend to prefer over the Blunderbuss. With some work on the background and a few lighting adjustments, I should be wrapping up the first boss in our latest challenge. Although the Cleric Beast is an optional boss, it is usually the one people encounter first, and is considered the first boss of the game by many. The next boss we face will be the first real boss that is an optional. Gascoigne was a pretty tough fight for me as I was learning the game, so it should be a fun one to draw. We don't have much to go with in the way of attire for the fight, but we will have a couple weapon options, so let me know what you'd like to see show up. The boss also has two very different looking forms, so you can let me know which form you'd prefer to see as well. I hope you all enjoyed the video, and are looking forward to the rest of these bosses as much as I am. It will be a lot of fun revisiting the game. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, and subscribe if you'd like to keep an eye on things at my channel. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.